Hey there! Every once in a while you find a pen, you just run into it, and you think, hmm, that looks pretty nice. Yesterday I was in a local office supply store and I found a pen, and when I saw it I thought, now that's a funky chicken. And when I saw that, I, I had to have it. It was six euros, it's a pretty cheap pen, and I think it's, it's pretty awesome. That's odd. This is an odd pen in many ways. Uh, I like it. I don't know the brand. If anyone can ID this, then uh, you know, let me know, and I'll, I'll adapt the title uh, of the the review. But for now, I'll just call it the Funky Chicken. And I'm going to discuss the parts of the Funky Chicken. Then I'll tell you what I like and don't like about the Funky Chicken. And I'll do a writing sample with the Funky Chicken. Okay, the parts. Let's start with the cap. The cap is a little loose. The reason for that, I saw that in the store, but this was the only one they had, was that it has a system I've also seen in some Chinese pens, like the X450 by Jin Hao. It has an inner cap made of plastic. And you can still see the white thing in there. Well, that breaks. It's a thin layer of plastic and it can break quite easily. When people post it too hard, it usually snaps. So be careful when you have a system like that. Um, just look at this oddly shaped cap. It tapers quite strongly, has a nice little metal ring there, um, very tight clip, a little too tight to my liking. On top, there's nothing, just black. Now we have this white stuff, and some of the white stuff is actually letters. You've got an H right there, and there's an F somewhere, and an, an E. Um, and you know, I think it's quite funny. Then we have this little metal ring. You see that? The, the metal ring at the, the end of the barrel. And there's another one at the end of the cap. Making for a, a pretty nice uh, balanced look, I think. Um, go down there. There's a little notch near this end. And then there's another one of those metal rings. So if you post it, then again, you get that sort of double metal ring effect. So clearly, a black and white pen, a lot of black, a lot of white, some grey highlights as on the clip. The nib is stamped Iridium Point Germany. Uh, I've seen this nib before. Um, could be Jowo nib. Nib, I'm not sure, but I've, I've seen this on um, the, the, that scroll work, I think I've seen on the Ackermann Deluxe pen, which I've also reviewed. And um, I think Brian Gray identified that as probably being a Jowo nib. In any case, a lot of people, when they see Iridium Point Germany, think it has to be a, a, a crappy nib, basically. They, they think it's, it's, it's got to be bad. I didn't think so with this pen. So, you know, you have to keep an open mind with these things. It's, it's not because it's stamped IPG. That doesn't mean it's a bad nib at all. Very small section with a little lip that keeps the cap in place. Now, as I told you, the mic cap is a little loose. Um, but, in theory, it should keep the cap in place. Uh, simple feed, nothing strange there. Because this section is so small, I can't really picture anyone holding it like this. You're really close to the nib. You can hold it a little higher up there on the barrel, which is completely smooth, so it's, it's quite pleasant to hold. And if you post it, uh, then it's a, a fairly decent size, I would say, even when you're holding it a little highly. Now, unfortunately, the cap is a bit loose, so it will come off. But even when you're not posting it, for me, it's big enough to use you know, like this. Okay. The pen came with one standard international cartridge, one of the short cartridges. I happen to have Monteverde mini converter in the air lying around, and as you can see, that, that just fits perfectly well, works fine, uh, you know, draws up a nice bit of ink, and it's, it's easy to use, fits securely in there, so that's a good thing. There's this really long section thing going on, Pulling this up to the light. I have to check it. The inside of this thing is metal. So if you put ink in there, it may uh, cause corrosion. But if it's completely closed off, I may consider turning this into an eyedropper. You have this long buffer, which you, you can put some silicon grease on there. And you should be okay. Um, the only question is, will the barrel leak? So I have to try that with water first. 
Um, but in any case, that would be pretty cool. Even if it does rust, it's a six euro pen, so I, I wouldn't cry over that. And it would it would make it even cooler. Um, so, an extreme cigar shape, right? It's really a narrow at the ends, and then it gets much wider in the middle. Um, funky chicken. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, clearly the cap falling off is a bit of an issue. It's not too loose. As you can see, I mean, it doesn't fall off with, with, off with the slightest bit of, of pressure. I'm not sure if I, if I hit this. Yeah, I can make it fall off. Um, but, I mean, it's it's tight enough to, to stay in there. I can probably do something with it, with a, I don't know, a shim of some kind, and, and, and I'll, I'll see what I can do. But, that's just a defect. That's not something that's inherent to the pen. The nib is pretty smooth, and it's a very decent medium, I would say. It doesn't have any markings on it. I would say it's a medium, and it's smooth. It, it doesn't skip a whole lot. It's smooth, it's pleasant to use, so no issues there. And I think this thing just looks funny. It's just, I don't know, maybe I don't know why it appeals to me that much, but it's a little Mondrian-like in, in the, the style, perhaps, with those, those angular shapes. Um, funny little thing. So, I'm sorry I can't give you a brand name right now. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I know there will be some people who will now scour the internet and try to find it. Well, good luck. I'd be seriously be interested to know. I think I should now show you a writing sample, and um, that's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go with this little funky chicken. The nib, I would say, is a good medium. It's not skinny. Uh, as you can see, the posting can be a bit of an issue. Forget about that for now. It's big enough to hold uh, comfortably for me without posting. The ink is Gerbin uh, Rose Cyclamon. A nice, intense uh, rose ink. Writing. This is out of the box writing, no adjustments to the nib have been made. I think this is a very nice consistent ink flow. You saw a bit of a skip on the upstroke there, and you see it here, it's, it's a little uneven. But, you know, in all, I think this is a very decent performance. What about some fast writing? Let's see how the feed keeps up. of a skip there, but again, a fairly consistent inflow, I would say. Pretty nice. I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed. Um, line variation. I'm not expecting that much. And yet, sometimes you're surprised a little bit. Slut. Uh, this is actually some line variation. A little more than I expected. Interesting. Um, so as you can see, some nice line variation, wider and narrower lines, uh, which is quite nice. Cool. Okay, what about the... Um, I'm just rearranging something here off screen, so I can move this up a bit. Um, what about the wetness of the pen? I get the feeling it's a pretty wet one, this. Look, that beautiful even patch of ink. Not a lot of white in there. And reasonably wet. Not excessively so, but reasonably wet. When I say excessively wet, then usually I'm, I'm talking about a pen like this. Let me see. I haven't used this for a few days. So. You see that? That's just liquid ink on the page there. 
that is excessively wet. But, okay, we're not talking about that pan now. Um, talking about this one, which performs very, very decently, um, I would say. So, not bad at all. Uh, this was the funky chicken. I hope this was useful. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.